Welcome to Go Play Esports Podcast with Christopher Turner, Go Play founder and CEO, esports coach at the Southern University Lab, and gamer. Discussions on the emergence of esports at the K-12, collegiate, and professional level. Let's go! Let's go play! Hi, this is your host, Christopher Turner. This is another episode of Go Play Esports Podcast. Uh, exciting news. You know, I was doing some tallying over the weekend, and I just realized that we hit 1,047 downloads. Um, starting this podcast off, I said it numerous times before, that I started, the reason I started it was I'm an esports coach at a high school. And when I went into corporate America to talk about esports and how we can partner and sponsor, they had no clue at the lo- in the local market that I'm at. So uh, for us to be at 1,047 downloads is a major accomplishment. Um, I couldn't have did it without support from my family and my friends. And, and you know, lastly, the esports culture um, that has adopted me full heartedly and I'm just glad, I'm excited uh, that we reached reached that mile mark, and it's just time for a celebration. And so, you know, with that said, we're going to go ahead and go through the motion of things. You know what we do here at Go Play Esports. The field, Rocket League's new feeder system. Uh, the, the creators of Rocket League, they have partnered with Rival Esports to create uh, a, a cohesive new feeder system for Rocket League Esports called The Field. The Rocket League Championship Series is the feeder Rocket League Rival Series. Won't be replaced by The Field, but the teams will successfully be in competition and get a chance to break into the professional league. So, you know, with that said, you know, Hats off to, to Rocket League to, you know, have this longevity uh, within esports and to create a feeder system, man, and do this partnership with Rival Esports. And you know how we congratulate others that's in the business over here at Go Play Esports. We dropped the bomb. Uh, today's guest, and you know we always have a guest uh, here at Go Play. Uh, has been in esports for years. The last three of those have been mainly collegiate oriented. Uh, she also um, she 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 comes from the traditional sports. She did events like the uh, NFL Super Bowl, the NCAA Men's Final Four. I can't wait to have her on because I have a Final Four story, and I wonder if she was producing that at that time. I don't know, uh, but esports has has allowed allowed her to emphasize the passion in gaming, and she's developed in a very early age with games such as Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, and the list goes on and on. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Victoria Harsley, President of Unified Collegiate Esports Association and the CRO. Welcome to the show, Victoria. How are you doing? Victoria, I have some te- technical difficulties. I can't hear you, Victoria. Let's see. I don't know what's going on, but we don't have audio on Victoria. Give us one second. Do you have your mic on mute, Victoria, by any chance? Hello. I think we get we got it now. How you doing? Okay. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Uh it's just nice to finally meet you. I've I've heard some things about you and you know, for the listening audience I just want to go into let's let's go into um uh, As far as, um, you you know, your background, let's go into some detail. Okay, yeah. Um, 
for my background, um, I started out in semi-professional and amateur esports, um, just being kind of a, a team manager, um, a recruiter, um, keeping track of the different things that teams do <laughs> uh, when it comes to scrimmaging and keeping stat records and um, traveling with them to events. Um, I had a PUBG team go to the Cyber Power PC Tournament in LA um, and then travel to Kansas City and, and different things like that. So I did a lot in that area and then it crossed over into collegiate in 2017 um, and then I worked at some um, higher level collegiate uh, governing bodies in um, from 2018 to 2019. And then last year is when I jumped over um, to what is now known as Unified Esports Association, but was known as Midwest Esports. We recently went through a bit of a rebrand. Um, and then I developed and created the collegiate association that's under that brand. And that's awesome. So at what point, like in your career, you know, because I know you came from traditional and it looks like you've always been an avid gamer. At what point did you mm -hmm. start to recognize, like, it's time to make a, a, a switch over or I'll be more useful in that space? Um, I I always tell one story. Um, whenever I was in college, there was a, a girl in one of my sports classes. Um, I majored in entertainment management, and I focused on the sports and events side. Um and there was a girl in my class, and she was wearing a Cloud9 jersey. And I went up to her, and I was like, hey, I think your jersey is really awesome. And she immediately turned to me, and, like, she had just had that look on her face like she thought I was making fun of her. Um, and I was like, no, like, Cloud9 is my favorite team. Like, I, I really, like, I love it, and I know who that is. And whatever, she was just wearing a Shroud jersey. Um, and she just got so happy when she realized that I wasn't making fun of her. And in that moment, I realized that it's so underrated on collegiate campuses um, that – I wanted to start to make a difference um, in any way that I could and just trying to make it more inclusive and more um, legitimate and just, you know, whether it comes to scholarships or promotion or whatever the case may be, just making sure that collegiate campuses start to take it seriously. So that's when I transitioned into the collegiate aspect. Um, but I, I knew after working for the NFL and um, the Houston Host Committee in the 2016 Men's Final Four um, that traditional sports, while I loved it, it probably wasn't where I wanted my career to go, so I just started really focusing on esports since I had always been an avid gamer and I've always loved video games and the bonding that it can make for different people and friendships. I think we might have lost you again. Hello? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on today. We lost you again, but that's okay. <laughs> and so, and so, <laughs> on on your end, so I'm not sure what's going on, but but yeah. Okay. No, nah, but you, you're good if you're unmuted mu mu on my on your end. So so, you know, going going you know t towards the collegiate side of things, you know, what what are some things that you're seeing within that within that realm that are great, and what what things do you see that you know, we need to make better to make a better experience for that collegiate student that can hopefully go professional at some point or be in the industry? I think right now the programs that are branching out from just esports players and esports teams are the ones that are most successful and the ones that I think will go the furthest. So the ones that branch out into broadcasting and IT and management and all those different areas and getting experience at not only being a player, but just being a, a part of a, an esports, whether it's an organization or a company or whatever the case is, I think it really shows that even if you're not a player, you can really create an esports career out of something. Um, one of the major issues that I see in collegiate esports is right now everyone, it seems like everyone's in a hurry, which is understandable. Esports moves super fast. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, it seems like everybody thinks that they can just take the traditional sports model, like an NCAA or an NAIA, something like that, and just copy and paste it over to esports. But one of the biggest faults in that is people forget that there is a an ominous third party in esports, right? Like the, each game is owned by someone. It's their IP. It's their hard work and dedication that created the games we love. And no one owns basketball. Anybody can go pick up a basketball and arrange a game or a scrimmage or whatever the case may be. But in esports, it's very, very different. And we have to respect the IP and the information and, and all of the creatives that all these publishers have made. And I think that's one of the biggest pain points and what I sought out to try to fix and, and work with publishers 
is to um, just make sure that we respect what they're doing because we need to help them also grow the vision of their own athletic or their own esports and stop trying to make it a traditional athletic model. Um, but I think once we get past that, it'll start to legitimize esports in the collegiate space because publishers will see it as viable and it'll start matching with their bigger picture. Um, because I, I think we all know that the money isn't at collegiate esports, so a lot of the um, bigger groups aren't necessarily interested in it because um, it's just not where the money's at right now. But for me, it's more where, where the passion and the students and the information that's that's the value of collegiate esports is being able to grow mm -hmm. all of these collegiate players and eventually, um, you know, see them as equal as the football and basketball and the cross and all the other players on, on a college campus, just seeing them as equals and um, making sure that they're all treated pretty fairly. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. And, and so, you know, um, a little background, you, you might call it a little bit of it earlier. I'm on the K-12 side of things. I wanted, I wanted to kind of hear your perspective on what 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 do you foresee seeing as far as like K through twelve, you know, being that feeder for collegiate uh, players in the space, and 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 have you ever thought about it or started having those conversations? Yeah, I absolutely have. I'm actually on the board for um, the Michigan High School Esports Federation, trying to get um, K through twelve esports. Uh, super developed in the state of Michigan. Um, I think right now there are a lot of different options, and nobody has the you know the the go to <laughs> option. But I mean, mm -hmm. no one does in esports in general, so that's not abnormal. Um, but I just think you know, as as different states start to figure it out over over time, it'll be a collective. But I really appreciate states like Michigan that are it's a bunch of principals of a bunch of different high schools just coming together saying, hey, we want to offer this for our students because. Like I said, at the end of the day, at the scholastic level, um, pretty much any level, not just collegiate, but it's, it's about the student experience. It's about the students themselves. It's not about how much money can we bring in in sponsorships for this tournament and X, Y, and Z like you would see in professional. So um, I know in Michigan what they're doing is, is really, really great. And I think that, you know, once, once states start to form that collective, it'll move in the right direction. But like I said, I do think that that's going to take some time. But I also know that it's, it's becoming a major deal. So I think, you know, COVID aside, I know that that threw a wrench in everybody's plans. But over the next couple of years, I think that's really going to start to develop like it has in other levels of esports. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you keep, you, keep um, you know, repeating something in different ways as far as putting the students first. And, you know, um, I, would, I would like to hear more detailed uh, conversation about, you know, you mentioned – you know, building, you know, something around the students as far as bringing in some of those publishers and, uh, and other partners and building those skill sets. Um, I want to know, like, what what what, what are you been able to accomplish within the space that you've been in in Michigan and, and, and Detroit and, you know, what's what's like next for you guys as far as as far as that, as far as keeping the, the student first? With what I've built with UCEA, which is the Unified Collegiate Esports Association, um, that's the collegiate association that I recently built and launched, um, it's, uh, I always tell people it's student-centric um, because what I see in the space right now at every level, if it, it's all about the school or the institution, right? Like all the new news you'll see, the University of X, Y, or Z, um, they accomplished this. But at the end of the day, the students are the one that did that. So if you, you know, if you look at different examples, if you want to compare it to football, because I know <laughs> traditional sports is something that a lot of people know, so it's an easy comparison. Um, but you see, you know, the highlights of we all know Kyler Murphy's journey and then now, you know, follow him through the NFL. Like, you've created that story and that journey. And in esports, I think that that's a key aspect that's missing because we don't focus on the students. It's like they come and go and nobody really knows who they are. Um, it, there's an extra layer of... Um, anonymity in esports because they're all go by a gamer like a gamer tag or a handle whatever you want to call it um but my focus is to just really put like hone in on who these students are as people um and follow their story through their journey through collegiate and then if they go on to pro follow it there as well because like i said i think that that's a major aspect that, that's missing and i know that as um k through 12 as that esports scene develops, it'll start becoming, you know, like they were doing this in fifth grade and competing for this 
um, tournament, they won this title in eighth grade, and just a lot of different things that um, will really, really come together. But I know for my focus, I really am trying to take that to the next